Welcome to today's video. In today's video, we are learning how to take our street photography from this and turning it into this. All right, what's up? Welcome to the channel. I am Brock Wonder. In today's video, we are going to be covering the three things that you need to do to basically make an urban and street photo every single time in your own style. We won't be necessarily going over a preset, I'm gonna call it like per se, but we will be definitely covering a way that you can get a preset and use the fundamentals that I use it to make eye-catching street photography and make it your own. So if you know you like blue photos, if you like faded photos, these are things that you can basically take away, make your own preset for your own photos and achieve that nice street urban look uh, that we all come to love. So that said, we're gonna hop right into Lightroom Classic. I'm gonna take you through the first basic steps on how to correct your photo and then we'll go over the three things that you need to do to get that urban look. Okay, so the first step when you're editing any photo is really to up the exposure, make sure we are exposing correctly and how we want it. Generally, I try to leave a peak up in the middle of this photo and then stylistically, I dump the contrast, drop the highlights, raise the shadows, dump the whites, and then of course bring up the blacks. And now we have an absolutely awful looking photo, but this is where we go from here. I basically take away all stylistic options in my photos and then bring them all back how I want them. The next thing that I like to do is actually drop my clarity just a little bit to really soften them out. So now, as you can see, we basically have a photo that looks pretty bizarre, but we're gonna fix it from there. So the first thing that you wanna do with your photos when looking for urban and street sort of looks is to add back in the contrast and figure out how punchy you want to make your photos. So this comes from the tone curve. So we're gonna hop on into the tone curve and I'll show you what I like to do. As you can see, the whites are all flattened out, the blacks are all faded, and the tone curve in its only first S curve rather than in our RGB curves is the controller for contrast. Rather than basically pumping up contrast and bringing all that back, I like to flatten it out and then stylistically choose manually how I want it. So this step will be different for everybody. But what I like to do is bring my three points right here, I add a fourth on the end, and sometimes I'll add a fifth right here, and I pull this up, drop this down, bring this here. And now already you can see that we are bringing back our black tones in this photo. And then depending on how gray I'm gonna say photos are, I'll, uh, I'll bring up the midtones. But for this, I'm gonna drop it a little bit because there's a lot of light in this photo and then add some dynamism back by bringing up the highlights. And now, as you can see, we brought back that sort of dynamic punchiness to our photos, and it's how I like it for my own photos. Really, what I think the big takeaway is, is if you're looking to learn how to use a tone curve, you're going to want to fiddle around with the midtones. That adds your own sort of style to the photos. The blacks and the whites, just opposite, bring the blacks down, bring the whites up, or like the highlight area, and then depending on how much fade you want or how much contrast you want, play around with the midtones, and that's a general rule of thumb. In a separate tutorial, I can go through the RGB curves because that dramatically impacts the style of your photo by adding colors and color contrast, but for today's tutorial, we won't be going through that. Then, of course, we get into the second thing that you need to do with your photos is really playing around with with color. So urban and street photography, more often than not, especially the Instagram version, is desaturated. So I'm gonna show you how I go about desaturating colors uh, for street photography. So what I like to do with my tones is bring my reds over to my oranges and you can see how that uh, dramatically impacts them. Overall, I'm gonna say I'm always looking to make my red tones uh, blend with my oranges. I just think it creates a more cohesive look. And then with your orange tones, you're gonna to bring them a little bit over to the reds. Basically, you don't wanna create a look that is super teal and super orange, cause that is cheesy and pretty much overdone since 2017. But you wanna make sure that you don't have like too many colors in your photos because then it gets too busy. That's what really makes street photography your own style is figuring out what makes a busy photo, figuring out the colors you wanna bring out, and that's exactly what I like to do by just blending colors together based on what I have available to me. So yeah, so we're gonna bring the oranges down just a little bit over to, let's say, minus seven. The yellows, we're gonna punch down to minus 50 or maybe 44. Greens, we bring down to minus 25, or like minus 30, minus 25. Aquas, we bring 
back to the blues. I don't really like aquas too much in my photos. I like blues because when you desaturate blues and then drop luminance on blues, you get punchier blacks. And that's a little trick that you can take away for your own photos. Purples, of course, we're gonna have here. And then magentas, we bring down just a little bit to have it right there. So you can see what a dramatic impact that's had. The yellows are closer to oranges. The reds are just a little bit more on the, uh, on the orange side and it's a little just less frantic i want to say but the better way now to actually go about getting rid of that is to now adjust saturation so i'm going to go ahead stylize the saturation how i want you can stylize your saturation how you want but generally in street photos your blues are gone and that's because once you get rid of blues you get those punchy blacks you have higher contrast and that is pretty much quintessential with the street photography look if you were going for more travel photography you would keep the blues you would have that more sort of like travel sort of vibe that like warmer tones with the oranges and the blues contrasting whereas urban it's that desaturated punchiness i'm gonna call it so yeah let's just go ahead and fix that up now so all right, so we're already getting there. I brought back up the blues just a little bit because you wanted to create some color contrast. I think it adds to the photo, making sure that the buildings have some blues in them. But really, we're looking to create anything that's black in real life stays black. If I punch the blues all the way up, you can see the road is actually blue. So we want to bring that back down and just bring out the blues on the street so that we can maintain that sort of punchy uh, look that we want to go for. When we then have our luminance, our luminance is what creates, as you can see, wherever blue was in the saturation, that's where we can then add some punchiness in our blacks. So we wanna bring our blues just a little bit down. We wanna make sure our aquas are brought up because that's the sky. So again, we're adding color contrast similar to what we had with the tone curve. And then when we have our oranges, I think our oranges are looking pretty good. Our reds are looking pretty good. We're gonna selectively adjust these because they're a little bright and again, distracting. But overall, I'm pretty good with what I'm looking at right here. Color grading will be the last thing we come to. And then when we go down to our calibration tools, we wanna to make sure, again, we're bringing those colors to cohesiveness. So the calibration tool is basically your window of adjusting all of the colors and making them more cohesive in a global way. So you don't have to individually adjust the color panel. So if you can't stretch your colors as much as you want to in the HSL panel, then you go down to the calibration tool and then you adjust it from there so that you can basically bring everything together and it melts nicer. So jumping into calibration, you know, if this is 2015 travel YouTube, we're looking at calibration to the right, blue to the right, left, and then our green and boom there you go teal and orange look very cliche and pretty much overdone at this point so what I like to do is take a look at where my reds are at and if they're not really blending to where I want them I adjust them just slightly and then play around with my blues to bring everything back to the level I want I always desaturate my blues because that takes out some of that punchiness from the reds that's probably a little bit overdone um, I'm gonna bring this back up just a little bit and then directly get rid of my reds because as you can see, this is very, very bright and very colorful and I want to fill this image with the color grading panel afterwards. So when we go to our greens, we're just gonna adjust this slightly and then bring back down our greens probably about here. And as you can see, slight differences, but we get that sort of faded look. We got rid of the yellows completely. Everything's blending quite nicely and I'm pretty happy with this. Last step then is the color grading panel, and this is inevitably up to you. If it's summer, I like adding warm tones in the highlights. If it's winter, I like adding cool tones in the highlights. So realistically, you just find a color that fits for you. So I'm gonna keep it right around here, add a little bit of a darker blue in the shadows, maybe bring this down just a little bit, bring down my mid-tones just a little bit, and then cool this thing off ever so slightly, just like that. And as you can see, that is looking really nice. I'm very happy with this. And now we can basically fix what we're not happy with. Just quickly, we can drop the shadows just a little bit more, I think, on the right there, add a little bit more punch, and I'm gonna call that looking pretty good. We can warm this up just a little bit. Let's say 6700 and bring down our whites or our highlights 
there we go. And the one thing I'll do is I'm not really a fan of what's going on with this building here. So I'm actually just gonna pull that back just a little bit. I think it might be the yellows. Yeah, it's the yellows. So I'm just gonna pull the yellows down a little bit and then adjust my oranges just a bit, adding some contrast there and adding some orange back. And that is looking pretty solid. So once you're at a level where we have fixed the exposure, added the contrast to get the look that we want, and then remove the colors that we don't think really fit our style, now we add in some of that moody lighting. And we're just gonna cover this quickly because I could probably make a whole video on filters and how to use them to create atmosphere. But for this video, we're just going to really focus in on our subject. A lot of street photography is focusing in on one person, that central point of focus, and that's exactly what we're gonna do here. I pretty much use this technique in everything that I do. And what this technique is, is you take a radial gradient, you put it over your center point of your subject. We wanna invert that, and then it brings down the exposure all around us. And then I like to pull the exposure all the way back up. So the brightest point of our image is actually our subject and we're naturally causing our eyes to gravitate in the direction of that person um, to be able to help us better. Now, another thing you might be wanting to do is adding a little bit of a vignette to help guide our eyes up to where the light is. And if I'll do anything else, it's add a linear gradient at the bottom of the photo to be able to help uh, with doing that. Again, I said I would fix this sort of uh, bright red spot over here. You just add a quick radial gradient there. Uh, I might brush it if I was doing this for a print or something, but that now pulled that down. And as you can see, we take our before, and our after, and it's a basically a completely different image. So that pretty much sums up the three things that you need to do to create a street photography look or an urban look with your photography. I hope that this was a helpful tutorial for you. If it was, feel free to like and comment down below. You can take these three tips into pretty much any photo and turn it into that more urban look. Obviously, if you start getting green tones and you're in a forest, these principles won't really apply and they are for basically urban cities only and street photography in larger urban environments. With that though, I'm going to end the video off here and I just want to say thanks for watching. If you want to see the finished photos, be sure to check out my Instagram. So I will see you all in the next one.